purpose of this video is to show you how to use the ultimate GCSE computer science resources. If you're looking to find out how to use the teacher pack, there's a separate video. And if you're looking to find out where all the files are stored, there's a separate video. And if you're looking for how to install it, which is basically a case of copying and pasting the files, then there is also a separate video. Your best starting point is to find the contents file for your exam board. Um, so if you've got, if you're in this case, we're using Edexcel. So we just need the Edexcel contents file. So I'm going to open this and it's a, a PDF file which has got hyperlinks to all the different sections that we're going to need. Now we've got one of, of these open already because uh, it takes a little bit of time to open it whilst I'm recording the screen at the same time. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got, first of all, a link to the textbook pages for uh, chapter one. Um, when we've got other chapters in here, chapter two, three, four and five, we'll see all the other links as well. Uh, we've got a link that shows us where the activity worksheets are and it would open up that folder for it and any files to do with um, the examples. So all of these links here mainly will open up folders except for this which opens up the textbook. And then the presentations that belong to this chapter can be found here. Now we're going to be looking um, at the textbook pages so I'm going to open that file uh, which is a, a PDF document. And we're also going to open up the file, uh, which is a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and we're going to focus on the second part of this chapter, which is understanding algorithms. So here is the textbook file. Um, now, because the computational thinking section for Edexcel is a little bit complex, it does explain the specification coverage uh, and what's covered here and what will be covered in chapter six, because some of them, um, the Topic one stuff for Edexcel does need to be covered in chapter six rather than uh, this chapter. There's also at the beginning an explanation of how you can link to the Python files and the icons that will be used. And an explanation of how Prim is used, which is the idea of predict, run, investigate, modify and make throughout the uh, te online textbook. Um, it's also recommended here, look just while I'm talking about it, but if you're doing chapter one, uh, which is algorithms for Excel, and, and you've got a similar thing with the way that AQA and OCR are set up, you want to do the programming chapters alongside uh, at the same time. And where there's any flowcharts, you can see this is the icon that is used, and it tells you also about the software that you would need to use them, which is free of charge. And then you'll see a contents page. Uh, and the nice thing about this contents page is that you can click on the hyperlinks and it will take you straight to the section that you need. So here I'm in the section on understanding algorithms. Now, we're able to open up the presentation from that contents page, but because everything is interlinked, we can also open up the presentation from here. So I can just click on this um, link here and it will open up the presentation that is associated with this topic part of the chapter. Now, as we go through the online textbook, you'll see that there are a number of different features within it, which we're going to have a look at. So as I scroll down the page, you'll see for the first um, thing we've come across here is an example. Examples are used using this sort of orangey brown color, as you can see. And then as we scroll down, we get to an activity worksheet. And if I click on the hyperlink for that activity worksheet, it will open that activity worksheet in Microsoft Word, which then students can use this to answer the questions. So here's the example of this particular activity worksheet. And you can see that there's a template here uh, for students to use to answer questions, and then there's a template here for some flowcharts. Uh, some of the questions require written answers, and if you're giving this as a printed worksheet, you may want to add some extra uh, line gaps for students to answer their questions. But if you're giving it as an electronic worksheet, then there's no need to do that. So as we continue to scroll uh, through this textbook, you can see now we've got some more examples and another activity and you can see here how this has been linked to the run and investigate part of prim how it's linked to an excel spreadsheet there to help out with that question and we continue on and now you can actually see here we've got links to python files so these are files that where some sort of code has been used and in this case we've used some pseudo code but the equivalent python has been used there and because we've got a flow chart the original flowchart as well can be linked to just by following that link. 
And as we continue through, you can see all the activities are shown and you can see where uh, we've used code and you can see where we can open that file either using REPL or using Python. So I'm just going to scroll down uh, a little bit further now. So I've scrolled down now to the trace table section. Again, you can see some code and where there's a REPL that we can open or we can open the actual Python file. And then you'll come across this here. We've got a video. Uh, so we've got a video here about creating trace tables. All we've got to do is click on that hyperlink and it will open up the video that students can watch. But the best way of uh, following through this stuff is to use the presentations and to use the textbook uh, which is linked to from the presentations. So we're going to have a look at the presentations now. So this is the presentation for um, Edexcel, which is just uh, one that's being used for the demonstration. And you can see that it links to chapter one, topic two. And as I work my way through that presentation, you're going to see uh, some of the content slides that we can use. So here, you can see four um, links that will take us straight to a section of that presentation. So if I click on trace tables, it's going to take me straight to that topic. So rather than having to uh, go bits beforehand, we can go straight to the trace tables topic. And we can then work our way through this presentation. You can see us do some reading from the textbook. And then uh, we can see we've got an animation here, but it's just uh, giving us some information telling us what a trace table is. Um, but this is just some basic uh, text animation. What we're going to have a look at here, though, is something that's a bit more complicated, where it's showing us how the trace table has been uh, put together. And you can see that there's a link here, for, or not a link, so, but uh, it's showing us how this is a predict activity. You can also see the hyperlinks to the Python file and the REPL file. But as we go through here, you'll see how the animations can be really helpful. Um, so what this is doing, basically we're saying uh, that X is going to be 5 and Y is going to be 7. Um, and so in line 1, we've got X is being passed into this subroutine as 5. And we can see we can put that in. And Y is being passed through into that subroutine as 7. Um, and what we're doing is we're going through this one because it's a, a demonstration line by line. Um, so now we can see A is X times Y. So we look at the values of X and Y, which is 30, uh, 5 times 7, which gives us 35. And you can see now how these uh, animations continue through and you can use this to teach your students and show them at your own pace um, how to build a trace table. Um, now this one's done it line by line. Um, there is another slide then that takes you through showing that you don't have to do a separate line uh, for every piece of code. I'm going to skip through now uh, and get to the uh, section on iteration. Now before we do iteration, what you can see here is that there is an embedded video. Now I can't show that video because of copyright on here, so, but you can follow the link yourselves and have a look at the video. But throughout the whole textbook, you'll find that there are embedded videos that link straight and directly to uh, YouTube. So now we're going to start looking at another example of how um, a, a, an animation is used in the textbook and then we're going to have a look at how it links to an activity. So here's some instructions uh, that are given to students about how to write uh, their trace table when they're using iteration. And then here is an example working our way through it. Um, now the advice that was given in the last slide was to start a new line each time we go through an iteration. So as you'll see, but what we're doing is we're putting the, uh, the data through. We're going through line by line in the, um, in, in the code. And then we're going through this for loop. And what we're going to do is for each iteration of the for loop, you can see that we're going to go through with i starting as 1. It's going to end at y plus 1, which is 4. And we're going to continue on, and we're going to use a new line for each iteration. All right, so we're going to end up having 1, 2, 3, and 4 for i. Uh, we can see what we know there with a for loop where we're going because it's a count controlled loop. Um, now if we move on to the next slide, uh, we can start to see now how we're going to go through each iteration. So you can see the animations being used here, and we're showing now that what we're going to do 
is identify this as the first iteration and we're going to use a new line for that iteration. So i is going to be 1, okay, and I'm put here just by the side of it number 1 just to indicate instead of ticking off to, so I know that I've gone through this. And the result is going to be z times result, uh, well z is 2, so 2 times the result 1 is 2. And then you'll see that we can now go through, we can see we've got to the end of the for loop and we now go back to the beginning of the for loop. And you can see where we're going with this. Uh, but we're now going to look at the second time through the iteration uh, where i is 2 and then we can work out what the calculation for z is going to be. And this is a nice way of explaining to students how to do their trace tables. I'm just going to pause there because we're going to skip through to one of the activities. So here is an example slide where students are being directed to complete some challenges for trace tables. Uh, in this particular example, there's no link to an activity worksheet because the instructions are directly here and they're also mirrored in the textbook pages. Um, so students have just got to follow these links and follow the instructions that are on the screen. What I'm going to do now is just skip another few slides and we'll have a look at how we can use an activity that is hyperlinked. So this slide takes us to a hyperlink for the trace tables activity. You can see along here that there's a number of different Python files that students will, may need. They don't have to use them. Um, but we can select this uh, activity worksheet, which is simply a Word document, and it will open it for us. Um, so that's linked directly. If you want to know where the files are stored, have a look at the separate video that goes through the folder structure. So here we can see now that you've got a question and then you've got the space for students to answer. Now if you're giving them this out digitally, then uh, you just send them to uh, this file and they can then send it back to you. Uh, and the students will add in extra rows as they need them. Um, but if you're giving this um, work out and students are going to be doing it at home printed, then you may want to add in extra rows for students uh, between each of these. Uh, it's up to you how you manage it. Um, it might be that they're going to be answering questions in an exercise book. But as you can see from this activity, we've also got the links here to the REPL files. Now, if you have sent this activity as a separate worksheet, only the links to the REPLs will work, but at least they will work. Um, because now that we've taken it out of the folder structure, the links to the Python files won't work, but the REPLs will still work, which uh, means that the students have got access to the full Python code that they need. Uh, so that's an example of an activity. This is an example of a slide that links to the questions that appear at the end of each set of presentations and at the end of each topic within uh, each chapter of the online textbook. So if I was to click on this questions link, it would open up uh, a template that students can use to answer those questions. But before we do, let's just have a look at what we would expect to find uh, on this slide. So down here in the bottom left, just behind uh, where I'm probably hiding, you can see predict, run and investigate. So that tells us the type of questions within the PRIM framework uh, that students would expect to find. Over here, you can see all the Python files and the REPLs, uh, which are the same as the Python files, but stored on REPL.IT, uh, that students can link to that are relevant for that particular uh, set of questions. So when we click on the questions link, it will open up a Word document. So now I've clicked on the hyperlink, here is the file. And you can see each question is being asked, and then there is a space uh, for students to put their answers in. Now, just like with the activity worksheets, if you're setting this as a printed exercise, you may want to put some extra gaps in to give them more space to answer the questions. But if you're sending it as a digital worksheet, then you might be happy just to leave it uh, as it is, like this, and the students will fill in their answers. Again, like with the activity worksheets, um, the links to the REPLs will work, and these will work if you're still using it on your school network or in situ. But if you've sent this as a separate file, uh, once it's out of its folder structure, then the link to the actual Python file wouldn't work. But they can at least still get to the REPL fi um, uh, Python file, which is the most important. We've completed looking at all the resources that are now available within the Ultimate GCSE Computer Science Resources. 
this leads us now back to where we started, which was the um, contents page. And I said this is just the example for Ed Excel. It's the same for each of the exam boards. Uh, so just going back to that contents page, you can see where we've been. We looked at the textbook pages, we looked at the presentations, and we linked to everything from this understanding algorithms presentation. But also, all of these links here link to the folders where you would find the files that were being linked to. And when I close that down, you can see that we're back to where we started uh, with the folder structure. And if I go back to the original student destination folder, you'll see uh, that there is the contents page that we started with. So that's how to use these resources. I hope you enjoy using them. I hope that they're helpful uh, with your students and that you're going to find particularly the animated presentations bringing your computer science lessons alive and also that you're going to find the Python files as well make a big difference to sh help show understanding of how computer science concepts work. That's all for me for now.